thank you so much for joining me on the show. Thank you for coming back, not in person, but like, you know, the way we do everything now. Buddy, it was just, it feels like it was yesterday that we were right? in a thousand years ago, both at the same time that we were just sitting like, we would never have thought we would be like this. I feel moment. like I would have, I would have, I should have and would have enjoyed those moments more. Had, like I would have hugged you for longer. I would have talked to you for longer. I would have, I feel like there's so many interactions that I didn't fully appreciate because I didn't know that I would not be having them for like seven months of my life. Buddy, I know exactly what you mean. Maybe that's part of what this is all about for us is just to, it's just to appreciate right? like, the things we take for granted, like hugging people yeah. or being next to people without a yeah. mask on or being around people who don't have masks on and not wanting to hit them. <laughs> 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 or, um, before or like, we berate them or ask them like, what the f is your problem? Why can't you wear What's the big deal, man? This is, I feel like this is the part where Scarlett Johansson starts talking to you very softly <laughs> and brings you down and just like <laughs> calms you. <laughs> um, you're one of the most versatile actors that, that like of our generation, you know, I feel like in many ways, you know, what we see of you in the movies is who you are in real life because Mark Ruffalo in real life is somebody who's been outspoken for a long time and it's no different right now. You know, Kenosha is in the news, Jacob Blake, Kyle Rittenhouse, you know, the, 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 the protests, the shootings, the racial tension. And you wrote a really powerful piece that speaks to Kenosha because, you know, it speaks to Kenosha from your heart. As somebody who's from Kenosha, what do you wish more people would understand about what's going on there? Well, you know, <laughs> It was shocking, first of all, to just see Kenosha in the news at all. I mean, it's just not a place that um, you, you hear about uh, other than, you know, factory closings. And um, and my family's there. And, um, you know, I, I uh, it was devastating um, to see what happened there and then what, what followed. Um, you know, to see Jacob Blake um, shot like that in front of his family. Um, and then to see... You know all these people you know call, go out and, and 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 protest for black lives you know which is what we're doing you know and, and and that's the truth of this moment and i and i feel bad for anyone who who doesn't join us especially for the people who say all lives matter because if you truly believe all lives matter then you should be on the streets right now with your black and brown and white brothers who are all fighting for one of the races where obviously it doesn't appear like they are being considered the same way the rest of us right. are, all right? So that's what all lives matter really means, is that all lives do matter and that black lives have got to be lifted up. Then you should be out, you should be the first one out on the street, you know? But these protests have been, you know, predominantly peaceful. We don't hear about that, you know? We, we, we only see the guys like in Kenosha, Wisconsin, they made 170 arrests. Uh, over those days of protest and 120 of them were from out of town um, and they were provocateurs and they were, you know, trashing a town that they're not even from. That was what broke my heart because that's not what I know about Kenosha, Wisconsin. As, as, as disparate as the, um, it is economically, as much as people struggle there, there is, there is a community there. Um, that being said, that community is also facing, you know, generations of, of um, racial injustice and inequality. But what the news I was seeing coming out of there didn't feel honest to me. It felt salacious. It felt, you know, of course, they're going to go for the, the worst things. And then, of course, you have um, what, you know, the kid with a 17 year old with an AR-15 um, being called from out of state uh, to come and be a vigilante and and right. basically shoot people. All this was heartbreaking, and I and I was honestly, Trevor, I was paralyzed. I didn't I didn't know how to respond to it, and I and and usually I I get some sort of message like, this is your time to go, this is your time to be there. This, but you know, we're living in COVID. I couldn't go. Um, you know, I'm taking care of my family here um and uh and then and then uh, something opened up you know i i was reaching out to the community i heard about this uh black blak black lives activist of kenosha mm -hmm. 
And, um, and so I reached out through them and um, did that Instagram IG live right. to, to counter this kind of story that was coming out of the Kenosha News at the time, that was coming out of the media, that was coming out of the Trump campaign, that Kenosha, Wisconsin was some kind of um, hellhole where uh, black terrorists were, were terrorizing the community, which is right. total and utter bullshit, as we all know. I think a lot of people would appreciate the fact that you don't just speak out, but you also advocate for action. This election is one of the most important that America will ever face. And you've gotten out there and people have known for a long time that you are a huge Bernie Sanders supporter. And now you've been going out saying, people, we have to get behind Joe Biden and we have to vote. You know, for a long time, it felt like the Bernie faction of the party would never uh, coalesce behind uh, Joe Biden. But it feels like this election is different, would you say? Yes, we, we learned a big lesson from 2016. You know, the, the, the propaganda of, new, of, of the United States um, elections and election cycle is that the presidential election is going to solve everything. But an election really is only a comma on a movement. And so we have to look at who is who are the candidates and how do they align to what this movement is about? Which candidate is going to bring us closer to racial parity? Which candidate is going to bring us closer to a Green New Deal? Which candidate is going to bring us closer to um, uh, debt, uh, student debt reform? Which candidate is going to bring us closer to um, uh, universal uh, health care? If you have any sense of long-term movement building, then you have to say that's Joe Biden. We're not gonna get that from Trump. We all know that now, okay? And so at this point, if you're an activist, if you really care about the movement and the things that you say you care about, mm -hmm. the closest thing you're gonna have to coming, to making that happen is Joe Biden. And when Joe Biden is in office, we're not going to stay on the White House long like we did with Obama. We are going to keep coming. We are going to keep demanding and we are going to make sure that we have movement on this thing because you want to know what? We put you in office this time. You know, like when I was in Kenosha um, and, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I wanted to know what was happening there. That was right. really happening there. They were having a block party, Trevor, and they were dancing and they were doing COVID testing and they were doing haircuts and they were feeding people and they were registering people and they were uh, having people sign up for the census. That, that's what the community does. And, and that's what's beautiful about what's happening in this moment. The, 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 the gold in um, the silver lining of Trump is that all of these organizers who've been doing this work for years are all coming together from, whether it's from the environmental movement to the racial justice movement, to the criminal justice reform movement, it, we're all interconnected now. And we've never been that way. Th there's so much um, to be hopeful about right now. And I think that's the message that we're missing, you know? Well, I, I hope that your optimism is rewarded. And uh, it's great to see that you still have the passion that you've had for so many years. Thank you so much for joining me on the show. And uh, good luck when you get back out there in the streets. Buddy, we got we to gotta make a plan for voting. We got to, I mean, make a plan. Check your registration. Call a friend. Take a friend. <laughs> take your grandmother. Make it a party. Make a plan. And that's how we'll win. Mark Ruffalo, thank you so much for joining me. Love you, man. You're the best. Thank you, Trevor. <laughs>